What are you doing? I'm practicing that new FBI dance move, you know, when you drop your piece out on the dance floor. I call it the club pop. Welcome to Questions Over Coffee. Today, the first question I'm going to start with comes from Stephen B. on YouTube, who asks about our new vacuum seal trauma kits. So can you now fit two trauma kits in one pouch with your new vacuum seal kit? It's a stretch. So we, as you guys probably know, we have a fat boy version of our trauma kit and a tall boy version of our trauma kit. And the way that these were designed is that you could not only have a vacuum seal kit in the back in either one of these, pouches, so they both have a section in the back for a vacuum seal kit, or you can break down the kit and actually put the individual components in these side wing pockets, uh, as well as in the stuff pouch in the back, and then with the shock cord you can route some stuff too in the front. Um, so I started experimenting a little bit, and what you can do is actually rig up this shock cord in the front to kind of become, I don't know, this all-in-one type of deal, I guess. Um, and by adjusting it a little bit, you can fit a trauma kit in the front there, just like that. And this actually does fit. Um, it's a little tight of a fit. Um, but I did want to at least show you what it looks like when you have it a little overstuffed with, with two kits. But it is doable. I'm not sure it's something that I would necessarily advocate, but um, you can retain the functionality of the pouch like this too, provided you, you put it in that elastic. You're not, you're not going to be able to stuff two of them in that back pocket, um, but you know, the, the fit and finish of the pouch is stretched a little bit. You can kind of see it on the side, um, and you might have a little bit of a challenge getting your uh, mouse clips in, in the back, and so on and so forth if you're mounting the Molly. Uh, but it does work, and then if you pull down on it, you do have both your kits, and there is kind of some retention on it too. So. It is an option. Uh, I don't necessarily think that I would probably advocate that, but if you're in a position where you need to have a couple of trauma kits in a pouch to, to throw to somebody in an emergency situation, that might work for you too. So hopefully that answers your question on our new vacuum sealed trauma kits. Okay, next question comes from Ryvik, Ryjek, R-Y-J-E-K, that guy, on YouTube. Can you send the coffee to Europe as well? So. Last time I made a deal with everybody, we have this pile of coffee from Avoca because we have a subscription to them um, and we are exceeding the, uh, the amount we can keep storing and cycling through. We drink a lot of coffee, but we don't drink that much coffee, so we've had to curtail our subscription a little bit. However, we want to give you guys the extra bags of coffee, so in the last video I made for Questions Over Coffee, I said, best question in Questions Over Coffee, we would send a bag of coffee to. So. His question is asking if we can send it to Europe, and sure, I'll make that deal. If you come up with the question that wins for the Questions Over Coffee episode, we will send you a bag of coffee no matter where you are in the world. I may regret that, but I'll make you a deal. <laughs> All right, so thoughts on the FBI agent that accidentally fired a round in that club. This comes from Davis on YouTube. Or rather, snapping or locking Serpa-type holsters versus friction Kydex holsters. So here's the deal. Um, there have been a couple of things that have been documented lately. Um, there was a video that surfaced not only with the FBI agent that did the freaking backflip while he was dancing <laughs> and uh, the gun dropped out. He put to put it, I think he picked it up and then it fired. So that is what's called a negligent discharge. So accidental discharge AD, negligent discharge ND. So there's a big difference between the two. Um, you'd be hard pressed to ever find a situation that's actually an AD. In my opinion, uh, very rare, uh, more than likely, the gun is going to go off because of negligence on the shooter's part, not because of the gun uh, malfunctioning. So yes, there are truly malfunctions that happen and occur, but more than likely you're gonna run into an ND situation. Um, and then there was also an ND with a, um, a, an incog, so a G-code incog or a Haley strategic incog, um, but that was obviously an ND, so what, what happened in that situation is the guy was reholstering appendix 
and his shirt or something got in the way, boxers, I don't know what it was. Uh, maybe he had some silkies on and they got lodged in the trigger guard or something and went to put it back and he literally shot his dick off. So um, luckily there was somebody there medically trained and I think he wound up surviving. Um, but that kind of goes to, to kind of along that question, I wanted to talk a little bit about kind of appendix. And so I also use an NCOG already cleared my gun because I don't want to ND on the video. Um, but I carry a Glock 43 and I carry an NCOG and I always leave the gun typically in the holster for the most part. So, you know, if I'm putting this on the nightstand at the end of the day, um, it is, it was in the holster. It's on the nightstand. You can see the trigger guards very well protected in the NCOG. You're not going to get anything, you know, lodged in there unless it goes in as you're inserting the holster. So, a lot of times if I'm, you know, checking weapon in the morning, which I typically do, um, it always goes back in the holster before I put it on in the morning appendix. So that's something that I always do more of a, as a safety precaution for myself. I don't like the idea of holstering uh, appendix. So when I'm at the range, I'm very careful with that. There's no rush back to the holster at any time, no matter what. So I wanted to kind of address that a little bit too. If you were reholstering, there is no longer a threat. If there's still a threat in the immediate vicinity, you're still scanning, you're assessing, you haven't put the gun back in the holster yet because the threat still exists. So therefore, there's no race or timeline to go back into the holster quickly. And that's my opinion. Some people may disagree with me, but um, that's how I truly feel about guns and reholstering and stuff like that when you're, when you're on the range. So. Hopefully that answers your question and addresses it a little bit. Um, I really like the NCOG just to come back to that a little bit. Um, I've been using it for years now and I can't see myself ever moving away from that as a daily carry holster. Uh, no matter what happens with other people's problems and negligence, um, I, I really love the holster. I think it protects it very well. Um, the retention is amazing in it. Um, I'm not doing backflips on the dance floor, so that's, uh, that's not something I typically have to worry about. Um, if I was in that situation, I would probably get something with a level of retention. Uh, you specifically address SERPAs, and I don't like those because of some stuff that's happened with the, the SERPA retention. Uh, you can look that up if you're interested in it. I'm, there's plenty of stuff online about SERPAs. So hopefully that answers your question, Davis. Okay, this question comes from Tyler W. on YouTube. What was the organizer on the wall behind Brian during the intro in the last episode? That is slat wall. So... Slat wall is something that you can put uh, peg mounts on. I don't know really what you would call those devices, but it's very easy to, to put them into slat wall. It looks pretty good. Um, however, it's a big pain in the butt to put on the wall and leaves lots of holes and it's a big pain in the butt. I already said that, right? So I really like it. I think it, it has a purpose. Um, I really have been leaning towards trying something like that. Um, what is it? The Gallo Tech Gallo Systems. Anyhow, there's a there's basically a wall system that's being made now that I really want to try. Uh, that's better than slot wall, I think, because they've got kind of accessories like um, things that will hold your magazine and things like that. So. The pegs that actually come on slat wall are okay. They're not exactly anchored well, if, if you know what I mean. So it's easy to slip off. Yes, you could put ARs and stuff on, on the wall to display them, but I really wouldn't, I don't know. I just don't completely trust slat wall for things like that. So um, I will put a link to that system that I just tried to remember um, in the video because I, I think it's got really good potential. I personally haven't used it, but um, if I were to put something on the wall now, I would probably go with something like that. Um, however, this was meant as a kind of a display here at ITS headquarters, so that's why we went with Slatwall. Okay, I looked it up. It is Galatech. I will put a link to their website in the description of the video. So, uh, last question comes from Tika the Husky on Twitter. Are we going to get Jurassic World patches? No. Uh, I don't really feel like doing Jurassic World-ish kind of patches. I, I don't know. I don't even know if I'm going to see the movie. Yeah, jury's still out on that one. Anyway, so thanks for your questions. I am going to pick a winner here to get a bag of coffee. 
Um, you can normal. All right, so I'm going to do Davis, um, the thoughts on the FBI agent with the holster stuff. Um, I thought that was a really good question. So Davis, please email support at itstactical.com, and we will send you your very own bag of a Boca coffee straight from Fort Worth, Texas. So thank you very much for your questions. Um, as always, use the pound tag gear chasing on any social media network, and we will find them and get them answered here over questions over coffee on questions over coffee on the show, this show. We'll get them answered for you. So thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to check out our membership options. We'll put some links in the description for that as well. And thanks for watching.